The television hummed, a warm, inviting presence in the corner of the living room. It was a portal to fantastical worlds, hilarious characters and endless adventures. My after-school haven, one channel in particular held my attention captive. Channel 8, a kaleidoscope of children's programming, cartoons with vibrant colors and catchy theme songs, puppets that told silly jokes and taught valuable lessons. My favorite was Nog in the Nog, a stop-motion animation about a gentle king in a land of Vikings and monsters. Noggin, with his kind eyes and crown askew, felt like a friend, a comforting presence in my daily routine. The school bell would ring, a symphony signalling freedom. I'd race home, backpack bouncing, eager to escape into the world of Channel 8. The familiar opening jingle, a burst of trumpets and drums, brought a smile to my face. It was a ritual, homework could wait, snacks were secondary. The television held my full attention. I'd sit cross-legged on the floor, mesmerised by the flickering images, lost in a world of make-believe. One afternoon, my usual routine took an unexpected turn. Channel 8, my constant companion, seemed different. A strange energy crackled from the screen. It was during a commercial break. The usual cheerful jingles replaced by an eerie silence, then a voice, deep, raspy, and utterly unfamiliar. It spoke of things I couldn't quite grasp, shadows, secrets, and a place called the Whispering Void. Fear prickled at the edges of my excitement. The forbidden was always alluring. I sat transfixed, unable to tear my eyes away. The voice faded, replaced by a distorted image. A figure shrouded in darkness flickered on the screen. Its eyes, two glowing embers, seemed to pierce through the static, staring directly at me. The figure moved closer, its form shifting, morphing into something monstrous yet strangely familiar. A wave of cold washed over me. I wanted to look away, to run and hide, but something held me captive. A morbid fascination rooted deep within my childlike curiosity. The whispers started then, faint at first, like wind through dry leaves, then louder, clearer, echoing through the room. Section 5. Shadows in the Day. They spoke of things children shouldn't know, dark secrets hidden in plain sight. The world, they hissed, was not what it seemed. Shadows lurked around every corner, and something sinister, something ancient, was watching, always watching. The images on the screen intensified, a whirlwind of grotesque figures and distorted landscapes. My heart hammered in my chest, a cold sweat clung to my skin. Then, as quickly as it began, it stopped. The screen went black, consumed by static. Section 6, a lingering unease. Silence descended upon the room, heavy and suffocating. I sat there, frozen in place, the echoes of whispers still ringing in my ears. The world seemed different, darker. My safe haven, my beloved Channel 8, had been violated. The familiar opening jingle of Nog in the Nog did little to soothe my frayed nerves. The images from the static-filled screen were seared into my mind a constant reminder of the unseen world lurking beneath the surface of my reality. The next day, the news spread like wildfire through our small town. Mrs. Peterson, who lived two doors down, had disappeared, vanished without a trace. The police were baffled, no forced entry, no signs of a struggle, just an empty house and a sense of unease that settled over the neighborhood like a shroud. Whispers of foul play and strange occurrences circulated among the adults. I listened, my blood turning to ice. The words from the static-filled screen echoed in my mind. Shadows lurk around every corner. Something sinister is watching. Was it just a coincidence? A cruel trick of my overactive imagination? Or was there something more to the eerie transmission on Channel 8? A connection, however tenuous, to the real world and its unsettling mysteries. The line between fantasy and reality blurred. My world, once filled with the bright colours of cartoons and the comforting presence of puppet friends, had been irrevocably altered. The shadows had crept in, whispering doubts and fears that I couldn't quite articulate. The television, once a source of comfort and escape, now held a sinister undertone, a constant reminder that things were not always as they seemed. The world, I realized, was a far stranger and more unsettling place than I had ever imagined. 
Years later, the memory of that eerie afternoon still lingers, a chilling reminder of the unseen forces that may shape our reality. Was it a simple case of a child's imagination running wild, or was there a deeper, more sinister explanation? The truth, like the static-filled screen that day, remains shrouded in mystery. A chilling testament to the unknown that lies just beyond our perception. Chilling reminder that sometimes the things that go bump in the night might just be closer than we think.